I don't really know what uh, what happened there, but apparently we got uh, we got disconnected, so we're back now. Oh man, was that a nasty fart that I just heard. Woo! Nasty boy. Wolf, death, what's up? How are you? I don't know, I just got disconnected. I don't really know what just happened there, but it was big disconnected. So, anyways, YouTube's doing it too. All these platforms are doing it, bro. It's fucking ridiculous. But I gotta build my own website. But I just want to do it myself. I don't want to like use anybody else. I can build websites, but it's always the way it's happened. I've fucking entrusted people to build websites, and then you know, like a fucking relationship will deteriorate, or you know, something will happen, and then you're just kind of like fucking behind the eight ball there. So, I don't want anybody else building my sites. I'm gonna fucking do it myself. My whole family watches you. Ashley, I appreciate you. Where are you guys from? If you haven't already, smash the thumbs up button on the video. But if you have any questions for me, I'm here. I'm just going to read the chat, really, and just that's what I'm here for. I'm just going to read the chat, talk. I got a little while. I wanted, it's, it's like a blizzard outside, but I actually wanted to shoot this video in the blizzard. So I think it would be cool. William Old Yeller Dogs. Yo, oh, Old Yeller. Bro, how many of you guys have seen Old Yeller? That's the question. I hope everybody. And how many of y'all have seen All Dogs Go to Heaven? I hope everybody too. Greetings from NYC. Much respect, my friend. Keep your great work and efforts on the happiness. Of your bullies. Hey, I appreciate you. Thank you. How much for training a dog? Really depends. But so what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to basically get like a point basically like because I, I made a post where I was like talking about I want to expand like lo my, my local dog training. Right. And lo loads of people that were like local and close enough started to pop up. But, and then again, what always happens when I talk about dog training is it's always like, well, I wish I was here. I wish I was there. I wish you, I was closer. So like, if you're in a country where you feel like you would like me to come to, if we, if you know other people, so like, let's say like, like my mom was like, Hey, would you come to the vineyard? And I was like, yeah, if I could get like, you know, three to five people, I'd come over there for that. You know what I mean? It's worthwhile. Yo, I'll go to different countries if you guys can get people signed up, right? So if we can get enough people signed up in each different country, I'd come to your country. Like, you want me to come to Australia? Okay, I think I need probably like 50 people at least, 50 people minimum to, to sign up to want to do training. And I, I would come to Australia. Uh, if if I can do, if I do the same thing, I'd do it in the UK. I'd, I'd do it in any country that you want, South Africa, Wherever I will go, wherever, as long as the crowd is is there and I can have that preset, right? And then I I go wherever. So actually, something I really want to work on, and I'm gonna try to develop it the most, the best that I can with everybody, and see if I can't make that happen. Because I'd love to travel around and and you know just I mean honestly, like I know I could like sell tickets and do like really big things, but I kind of just I would love to keep like a small circle going where I could just show up and, you know, set it up. So maybe I'm doing like, if there was 50 people, you know, maybe I'm doing like, I don't know, 25 people each, each day. Right. So we just do half and then we do the other half people. And then maybe 
the last day, I just do everybody together and we just kind of blend everything that we talked about together and we just answer a whole lot of questions and, you know, we just kind of go over it. So, um, I think that would be, that would be fun and it wouldn't be like, you know, fucking stadiums of people and the whole fucking thing, which I mean, I'm sure that's what I was, you know, working on setting up for a little while before is just trying to set up like seminars. So basically I, you know, just teach a whole room full of, of, of people and I travel around in different locations and, you know, we get different venues and stuff and, and we, you know, we get all that stuff uh, set and I do it that way, which would be a lot more hectic. And I just think it's a lot more like intimate and, and if I just do it small and, and it's like, it's almost like not even like that, like official in that sense. I mean, it's official, but like, you know, it doesn't even really need to have a name. It's just, I'm going to come teach, teach a class to some people in the country and then I'm going to go home. Um, so, you know, something that I was thinking about trying to get cranking. So if you have any ideas or interest in doing something like that, you can send me an email at dark at yahoo.com or, uh, ddkline.king at yahoo.com. You can use both of those emails and send me your ideas, send me where you're at or, you know, anything like that. And, and it will get back to you. Have you played a reading Raiden? Kind of want to see you bring size to the Merle because uh, Raiden at some point, yeah. Mm -hmm. At some point. Do you think online training is not effective? Um, well, I think it's effective, but I'm, I'm an old guy, so I'm more of like, uh, you know, I like to look people in their eyes and, and you know, where I could really talk to you, you know, like straight up one-on-one -on -one where I could talk to this person, I could, you know, and I could talk to these people. I just like, there's just something about in person, you know, that's just always better. But I've I've gotten a lot more comfortable with, you know, the digital form of, of training. I stayed away from it for a long time just because for me, there's, there's a lot of variables when it comes to dog training. And, and a lot of the time, you know, when you can't actually see something, it's very hard to give somebody an answer. So like an answer that I may give to one person may vary and be a totally different answer that I give to the next person, depending on what I see in those dogs. And also like somebody may say, Hey, uh, my, uh, my two dogs don't get along. Uh, you know, my dog, my dog, Ralph is the one that starts it with my, my other dog, Max. And this is how it happens. And they give me this whole, you know, fucking, idea of what they think's happening when in reality they're not the professional so how are you going to analyze what's going on and then feed me that information you could be feeding me a com the complete wrong information so being able to physically see things is a much better way to actually fix things when it comes um to dogs you know so that's why i just think in person is just a much better overall way for for people to learn and we're too fucking digitalized these days anyways bro it's like it's, it's like scary the direction that we're going in the world right now it's like dude ai is going to take over the world soon we're not even going to look at each other we have our heads in these fucking things and that's how we're going to see people oh, bro, it's going to be fucked so you know it's it's um good old school fucking seeing people in person and fucking talking to people you know it's what i like well you made you share your story with us i'm glad it didn't save my life. I'm a fan. Always be. Hey, I appreciate you, man. I'm I'm blessed to do so. Yeah. This Hulk a pit bull or a bully, whatever you want to call him. In this generation, you call him a bully. But technically, like literally, ninety percent of my dogs are all registered with the UKC as pit bulls. But we can argue about this fucking up and down until we're fucking piss blue in the face. It's like beating a dead horse at this point. I don't give a fuck if you want to call him a fucking elephant. I don't care. Like you know, it really doesn't matter to me. Um, but technically, on their paperwork, they would be considered pit bulls but in this day and age where we're at xl bullies or whatever hulk is not dead also just for the record he's he's actually right here you just can't see him he hasn't been feeling well so he's been kind of fucking shitting himself for a few and that's why i'm actually uh i'm well, i'm on i'm on desktop so i can't really show anything but there's i had to rug clean my carpets and stuff but yeah it's bad right now so Soon, hopefully, uh, they're clean again, and then we can go back to filming and being regular. Thank you for clarifying. I do miss Ace, though. Uh, don't we all? Are you going to breed Hulk again? I am, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was. He was almost going to do a breeding this month, but things just have been a little too crazy. Um, so, it just didn't happen. 
pit bull versus bully conversations like being a dead horse. Ah, bro, it is absolutely like beating a dead horse. It's ridiculous, you know? It's just absolutely fucking asinine that we're still on this to, in this day and age, you know? It's like, I think, it, you know, the funniest part for me is with people is like when they come to me and they like think they're like bringing me something new where they're like, Hulk's this, he's that, you don't know this, you don't know that. It's like, bro, I've been dealing with dogs. I've been in this game for 21 years. I've been in this game since before a bully was even a thing. Um, I have seen it all when it comes to these dogs, you know what I mean? I'm, I just let people go, man, you know what I'm saying? I let people do their thing and, and you know, spout off at the mouth or whatever, man. It don't affect me none, so. Online can be good to help people with basic stuff like shaping and teaching a lot of basic stuff. Yeah, basic stuff, right? So those are the videos that like I put out, you know, like basically like, you know, you can give people the information like, you know, over socializing your dog is, is a real big problem in this day and age, which is very true. I mean, most people think socializing their dog means the dog's got to get along with every fucking dog and every person that comes along. When in reality, what socialization should mean is that your dog can be in any situation and not have a reaction, right? So even if they don't get along or love other dogs, they can tolerate everything and be around. So if you remember my dog, General, you know, fucking legend, y'all better remember General. Um, but him is a perfect example. You know, I mean, you've seen him at the dog park. You've seen him around other dogs. You saw all that his whole life. You'd assume like, oh, this dog loves other dogs. He really didn't, you know, but he would tolerate anything. And that, that's what makes a good dog. I could take him anywhere and he's not going to have any kind of reaction to it. You don't like every person that you meet. You can't expect your fucking dog to like every dog that they meet either. Certain dogs are just not going to get on with other dogs. And that's just the fucking way that it goes. And why that we have to force that on them is the fucking strangest thing. It's very strange that we hold dogs to a higher standard than we hold ourselves. It's very, very weird that... They're just dogs, but yet we expect them to get along with every fucking person, every other dog. If they don't, they're a bad dog. Totally incorrect thought process. And it's bugged me for years that that's the way the world thinks. But that's the way the world thinks. The world truly believes, truthfully believes that fucking your dog needs to love every fucking other dog and every person. Otherwise, they're a bad dog. It's fucking unbelievable. Hey, hey. What's the, oh, the Super Chat? I forgot about Super Chat. Hey, thank you for the donation, man. I appreciate you. Sue Marina as the Shogun Army are going to stay down for real. Marlon, we AP. We appreciate you. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you for the love, too. I appreciate that. How do you make sure your pit bull does not hurt someone? I love these dogs, but just hear about them suddenly snapping. Arc Omen, they do not suddenly snap. Let me, okay, fucking hey. All right, we're going to have this conversation real quick. Listen. Bro, like the situation that was going on in the UK recently that everybody's seeing, or when you see dog, there's Hulk also, by the way, rising from the fucking dead. As you can see, that's Hulk right there. Uh, very not dead, very alive, laying down on the couch. Um, God, it hurts my brain when people say that. Uh, but listen, dogs do not just randomly fucking snap. This doesn't happen. There's Just because you don't understand how to read what it is that the dogs are showing you, uh, doesn't mean that they just randomly snap. See, dogs are masters of body language. This is the thing to understand. Dogs do not speak and communicate in the same way as we do. All right? They don't fucking talk to you. Barking for dogs isn't them talking to each other. Okay? I just want to clarify that. Dogs communicate with each other through their body language. All right? They are absolute masters of body language. Okay? Think about it. Like, just think about it like this. Like, if the only way you communicated all day was reading people's body language, think about how good at it you would be. And we're actually a lot better at reading body language than we give ourselves credit for a lot of the time, probably because we just don't even realize it. But when you're walking down the street and you see people, like, you can tell, like, generally what kind of mood somebody's in by kind of seeing the way that they're carrying themselves, the way they look. And that's body language. That's you reading body language. They're not saying anything to you, but... You can read it on them, right? So that's how dogs live their life fucking 24-7. You know, that's why you have dog trainers that do things with their dogs. Like, I see this commonly where the dog's great. You know, you see the dog doing sit down, stand, turn, like, back, all these great commands, and the dog's great. But you see these, like, subtle movements that these people are making. And if you ask them to stand completely still, put your hands in your pockets, and give the dog the same commands, a lot of the time the dogs don't respond. Because they've also mapped these teeny little things that you do with your body 
that that gives them the signal to do the things that you want them to do. And sometimes we don't even notice that because us as humans, we are absolute major creatures of habit. Like, and again, these are things you probably don't even notice, but like when you go to work, generally you will go the same fucking direction. When you, you, we're creatures of habit. We do things in the same way, right? So, and dogs, dogs will map that, right? Because dogs, they, what they understand is patterns and marks, patterns and marks. So when it comes to a dog randomly snapping, that's not the case. What's going on in most of these situations is you've had these loving family homes and I'm not taking that away. They do love, they love, they are great visual dog owners. They love dogs great visually, right? For you to see the dogs live in a good home, they eat good food, they go take the dog, you know, on, on the walks, it goes to the groomer, you know, they got a little toy box, all the toys. So they're great visual dog owners. Right? But when it comes down to the things that dogs actually need and require to function, dogs function under structure. And most people, when they get dogs, they it's crazy. Like They'll have kids and they'll be great with the kids. And I've seen people that are absolutely fucking militant with their kids and their kids are, are incredible. And then they're just like totally just fucking lackadaisical with their fucking dogs. And it's, it's unbelievable to, to see. But like you under, I understand why now. It took me a while to understand. But I actually do understand why this happens now, because most of the time when you see those situations, you know, people are putting most of their energy on onto the children and onto that. You know, I mean, those they're humans. OK, so what happens is when your kids like move away and, and a lot of the time, the people that are really getting in the most trouble with these dogs are generally like middle aged people who don't got no kids. Like, you know, I've never had kids, don't understand, you know, discipline, don't understand rules, don't understand boundaries. You know, you got people out there like, you know, these force free dog trainers and all this shit. What it's crazy to think about is when you think about force free dog training and these people that are, you know, force free, they're peaceful, they're natural, they're friendly. Why are they the most pushy people on the fucking planet? Right. And the other thing that's really simple to think about when you think about how force free dog training is very ineffective because, um, have you ever watched dogs? You know, I know it's like a lost art, but have you ever like actually watched how dogs are with each other? Have you ever watched the mom discipline her puppies? Is she just like telling them now you behave now? And it, no, she's physical with them. So animals are not force free themselves. So again, why us as humans think we're going to trump the way that dogs function and like, oh, we have a better method. You know, it's just like people are just out of their fucking mind. They're just broken. Like, you know, and like I said, most of these people are, you know, middle aged people who have either never had kids, just don't understand discipline, don't understand rules. So their dog lives in this way where they think everything's OK, like small little things. OK, like if you sit down on your couch and your dog just comes up to you and gets in your face and you just start petting them and you just start stroking the dog. All right. So these are small little things that we would consider gateways, right, to where this dog now is understands that they can take advantage of you. All right. That's not a respectful thing in the world of dogs. All right. If I sit down, my dogs do not just approach me when they want to. Right. It's that's not how they function. I know us as humans, but people don't do that to you as fucking people either, though. Right. Like if somebody just came up to you and just got in your space and started touching you, you would be like, what the fuck are you doing? But because it's a dog. You know, we have this like different reaction. It's man, best friend. It's like, oh, he just loves me. It's like, well, he may love you, but the dog is also disrespecting the ever living fuck out of you in this moment. And this is not going to make you a strong dog owner moving forward. Right. So there's a lot of little small things that go on amongst people. Like, and you can tell because most people all have the same common problems. Right. Like the most common thing that I that I see is uh, dogs. How do you get dogs to not pull on the leash? How do I get my dog to stop jumping on me? Um, you know, all of these. How do I get my dog to stay calm before going on a walk? Like these are the co most common questions that get asked. Or how do I get my dog to get along with other dogs? Right. And all of these things pivot off of the same shit. It's that you don't have control. You don't have structure. So you have a poor foundation. Right. So the key with dogs is to build a really strong foundation. And that's why early engagements with dogs is very important. Right. So I teach people early on to have their one of the most important things, if not the most important things when it comes to dogs is focus, right? eye contact. So that's something that I teach people early is how to teach their dogs to make eye contact with them and focus on them. If you have a dog, that's this is the best way 
to get through anything with dogs. If you have a dog that's reactive to other dogs or situations, teaching them to look to you, like they will drown out everything if you teach it properly, right? So um, again, the way that I go about starting to do that, I've made a couple videos on that and I put them on here. But again, so why these situations happen where dogs just snap? That's not the case. You're in a situation where you've built up a dog for many years to think that they're in control of the household. They run the show. You don't put any structure in their life. Like I said, you know, you you visually, you do good things for them, but you don't actually know how to give this dog the structure that they require, right? And that's where you see just, oh, out of the blue, he just did this. We we, we fed him love and, and all of these things. And just out of the blue, he attacked the family. It's like, no, here's the thing to understand, okay? Love won't train your dog, All right? Say that to yourself a few times over. Love will not train your dog, okay? Just won't. Like, you know, it's obviously love your dog. It's, it, you know, I love my dogs beyond, and that's how why I got to this point. But you have to be very clear with yourself to understand that. Love will not train your dog, okay? Rules, boundaries, structure, limits, Okay? focusing on that that's what's going to train your dog you can love your dog all you want right but that doesn't mean that they're going to do anything for you in that manner really they're just going to take advantage of you one of the greatest things that people say to me is when i'm in a sad mood my dogs comfort me it's like no actually what's going on is when you're in a sad mood your dogs take advantage of you because they know that when you're in that state of mind even if you've been practicing the right things nine times out of ten they're going to be able to get what they want from you Okay, if you give a dog an inch, they will take a mile. It's just how they operate, right? So I hate to be the one that bursts that fucking bubble, but when you're sad and your dog is giving you extra attention, they're not doing it because you're sad. So I just, I know. I know it's a tough one to hear, and I've, I've had to fucking, I've had to burst people's bubbles on that one for years, and I always feel bad about it because people are always like, well, when this happened, my dog was comforting me, and it's like, you know, I'd be a bad person if I just sat there and let you think that that was true. Um, structure is love. That is very correct, Kenny. Uh, my expectations of our dogs, uh, of our dogs, be wives. I'd be curious how bully type dogs do with corrections versus GSDs. I have the latter. I've read I can't treat like canes and same as my mine. What do you? Uh, it's a little tough to read. So I, I kind of know. I kind of know what you're saying, but I mean, generally, I mean, obviously, there's different characteristics. Too different breeds of dogs you know and that's something that you know dog trainers will go crazy over where it's like if you say like you know it's not about the dog it's about the owner it's it's about education is what it's about right? that's what it's about okay because when you're educated you would be educated on what type of dog you have knowing what type of characteristics the speed of dog has knowing this. so these are things that you know when you're an educated dog owner so being an educated dog owner is what's very important okay education I think they're, when people say good, it's like it kind of just takes away from it. It's educated, you know? <laughs> Excuse me. Wow. Um, so the education is what's important here, right, is that you understand. Because, you know, yeah, the, ba the main things with dogs are relatively all going to be the same, okay? Like the main things with the dogs are – I wish I had a fucking tissue in here, bro. I'm feeling like I got snots in there. The main things with the dogs are going to be relatively the same. Right. Like, you know, your 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 basic training and things like that are going to be the same now, like certain like different characteristics in, in dogs, like, you know, depending on if you're like a low energy person, you know, you having a fucking high energy dog really is not going to be. Thank you, guys. Is really not going to be a good idea. You know, if you're a, a low energy person, a high energy dog is not for you. You know, if you're a high energy person, a low energy dog might not be for you. So fitting into your lifestyle is, um, you know, obviously is very important in there. And there's certain things in dogs that are, oh, God, that are instinctual, you know? So those are certain things. In, instincts are things you can't train out, right? So, like, if you have a dog that has, like, genetically weak nerves, you know, where the dog, like, comes from a lineage of just, you know, being kind of sketchy and and non-trusting with things, generally those are things that are a lot harder to kind of work through because there is a genetic pattern. That's something that you can't actually change, now, you can try to minimize it the best that you can, but a lot of the time in situations like that, those are things that you can't actually change. You can't change the genetics, right? That's something you can't change. You can modify behaviors, but you can't change the genetics, you know, things that are genetically in the dog, 
like, you know, from their lineage or wherever they come from. Right. Um, but, you know, back to the, the, the household and how this kind of happens, you know, it feels like it comes out of the blue. But I've seen in like every situation where there's a dog attack or something happens. If you let me see into these families' lives, just let me see a couple of moments, a couple of interactions with you and your dogs throughout that. And I'll point out everything that's wrong and how you got to this point. It's never just out of the blue. All right. It's because you're lacking something. All right. You're, you're lacking the structure. You're lacking the control. You're not, you're letting the, you're allowing the dog to get away with so many different things. That's generally what happens. Most of the time people just think they put their dog through fucking puppy kindergarten or some shit. And now the dog's good to go. They went to the canine good citizens course and now they're just, you know, they're perfect and, and they're, they're, they're ready for the world and they never need to learn again. Dogs are just like humans, just like kids in that manner to where they're constantly learning. So, you know, creating a system with your dogs where they can clearly understand, you know, uh, yes and no. Like, I mean, you can say the dog to understand right and wrong. Technically, a dog is never going to actually understand right and wrong, but they can understand a signal that means this is something you don't like. This is something that you do like. Right. So that's stuff that we instill into the dogs early on. When I talk about early engagements, these are things that we instill. So when we're teaching the dog to make eye contact with us, we're also teaching them about, you know, um, a classical conditioning. Right. So a, a marker. So when the dog does something that I like, I'm going to yes, and I'm going to mark that. Right. Same thing with the dog does something that I don't like, which I typically use doorways or kennels and things, or gates outside to teach the dog, you know, the things that I don't like to strengthen a negative marker because it's a lot more difficult to strengthen a negative marker than it is a positive marker. So typically how we strengthen that, like I said, is by using gateways or doors. Um, so in the same thing, you know, dog, I'll close the door, I open the door, dog tries to come out, tell him, nope, close the door again, you know, okay, open the door again, dog tries to come out, nope, close the door, open the door. When the dog actually doesn't start to come out, that means that they're starting to understand what it is that I want. When they stay there with the door open for a minute, I'll tell them, okay, yes, they come out. Boom. Now they know they did the right thing. And now they're clearly starting to understand how that works, right? Because most people think that their dog understands the word no. And I'm telling you right now, 95% of your dogs don't understand the word no. They just understand your tone and the fact that you're upset, right? Like, and that's it. And they don't understand why you're upset. And that's the difference, but they just know that you are, right? That's it. So if you want your dog to clearly understand what you're trying to communicate with them and teaching them yes and no, is very important. And these are things that you have to teach. They don't just understand. And as I said, you think they do because you're loud or aggressive towards them or whatever, and you feel like they, they understand that, but they don't. Okay. Uh, so, and you also get people and let me raise your hand if this has ever been you. You also get people that, you know, the recall is another thing. But holy shit is a recall. Another thing like people go out with their dogs and have zero control. The dogs have no business being off of the leash at any point. Right? If your dog doesn't have a very solid recall, don't let your dog off the leash. Okay? Now, you see me wander around my property with puppies and different dogs that obviously don't have recalls. But one thing is one thing is I wouldn't do that in any area where I know there's like other dogs or somebody that I could potentially disrupt. Right? Because one person that you can't stand when it comes to dog owners is that person where their fucking dog runs up to you and all of a sudden... You know, you hear, oh, he's friendly. It's okay. He's friendly. And you're like, yeah, well, I could have been working on some training. My dog may not be friendly. I also just may not want to deal with people right now. So having your dog just run up on people is unacceptable. It's just unacceptable. So if your dog doesn't have a solid recall, meaning you can call your dog away from anything, keep your dog on a long line until they do, right? And the biggest mistake that people make and why you this problem just is like snowballs with people it's because they let the dog off leash when the dog doesn't have a recall. Okay. They let the dog off the leash and then they're trying to call the dog back and you're like, come on, come on, Toto, come on here. Come on. Can the dog just run around, not giving a fuck. And then you're chasing the fucking dog around trying to catch the fucking dog. And it's like, dude, uh, and you're all frustrated. And then by the time the dog comes to you at this point, right now you're pissed off. So now the dog gets to you and you think they understand you. So you're over here like, you little, rah, 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 why didn't you? So you're upset when they come to you. So essentially the only thing that the dog learned, because the dog, when you're chasing the dog around, they don't even know what the hell is going on. Nor do they care. They just think you're playing a game. But all they know is when they get back to you, you were upset. So you've just set that back. Not only have you made your voice weak, 
by continuously calling the dog when they're not coming? Because the number one thing that I would tell somebody about a recall is never call your dog unless you know they're going to come. Okay? Never call your dog unless you know they're going to come. That is the fucking main thing to understand. Okay? If you do that, you're only making yourself weaker. That's all you're doing. Uh, you know, that's it. So what I said, what I was saying, like, so like an example that I use when I'm out with my dogs, like sometimes I'll take the puppies like the other day, like cage shadow. These are, they don't really have a recall. Okay. But what I won't do. So what I'll do to get them to follow me in this case, and I've just always had this in a sense to where it's like, you know, I bond with my dogs to a different level. So they naturally follow. Okay. So instead of calling them, I will not use like, so even if I'm with Drake and I feel like he's not going to come, what I'll do is I'll just change direction. So I won't actually call the dog, right? I won't actually use any commands that they're supposed to understand. Because if I use those commands in a setting where they are not going to listen to them, I am only making my voice weaker, right? So when I'm, I have puppies, even if I've never taught them recall, I'm not going to try to call them by name or anything like that. I'm just going to change direction. And most of the time, the dogs, when in this setting where I'm at, they follow Right. So I don't have to weaken the, the recall. Um, but let me see what you guys are talking about. I was guilty of that years ago. Oh, Karina in here. Yay. Uh, yeah, I mean, me too. You know, we all are at some point or another. Right. Um, people love saying that their dog either just snapped or people love saying that the dog breed turns on their owners. Bro, I've been hearing that forever. Bro, I've been hearing that shit forever. Like, oh. I'm going to read about you one day. It's like, bro, I'm not like these people that are keeping bears in their house and fucking wolves and shit. It's a little bit different. Um, you know, I'm not, it's, it, this is, your dogs are domesticated, you know? So that, that's actually uh, not something that you're going to see. Dogs are not going to just turn on you one day. Here comes a kid to request something of me. It's going to be dad, can I, or can I have, or I want. It's pretty much what it comes down to kids. What do you want? You don't need to. Okay, Why? Because it'll make us better drivers. No, 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 no. It's cool, bro. No. Ah, uh, I know. All right, get lost. Um. <laughs> Sign up, kids. It's always. It's all. It's gonna be. It's not gonna be like, hey, how's your day going? Hey, is it? it's gonna be. Can I have? I want. It's basically all it's gonna be. Um. Yeah, the takers. Well, that's kids for you. Uh, I would call Diesel and then be mad if he wouldn't come to me. That's, but the, like, I mean, Karina, truthfully, like, uh, tr it's going to make us better drivers. Yeah, you see how they come with the bullshit? Um, tr truthfully, like, 98% of people are guilty of this. Like, you know, how many of you are out there calling your dog and when they don't come, now you're pissed off? And, you know, and you're pissed off at them and then you're yelling at them. So you can't do that, right? You know, the key is that you have to, you can be mad, okay? But you can't show the dog that. So hide it. You can be mad and you're, good boy, good, all right, yeah. You little motherfucker. You can do that. But don't show the dog that you're mad or you're just setting yourself backwards, man. That dog's not going to want to come to you again. Why the hell would it want to come to you? If the last time it came to you, you're pissed off. Like, you know, it doesn't even make any sense. It makes zero sense. So <laughs> just uh, people's mindset when it comes to dog training, they just don't really think things through. And it's not really your job, you know, to do that. But most of the time, that's how it goes. Um, what would I do if Michael Vick asked to buy a puppy with a boatload of money? I mean, you guys should know me by now at this point. It's not about... It's not about money like that at that point, you know. Um, in look, in truth, what he did and was a part of was fucking absolutely despicable, like beyond, of 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 course. Um, I mean, nothing, nothing makes any of that okay. Right? That's the first thing to know. But what I do know about those people is um this shit is going on all the time and because he was a celebrity it 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 was obviously it was made a lot bigger but people aren't even like it's disgusting how many people are out here fucking 
doing these despicable things and getting away with it. And it's like, it's, it's fucking all over. Okay. Now, would I sell a dog to him? Probably not. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is, you know, I followed the story, you know, being a, being a, obviously who I am, I, I, I followed the story for, for many years. Uh, you know, I watched the story. I saw him lose his entire career, lose millions of dollars, go t- t- to prison, um, you know, and, 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 you know, the whole thing. Um, do, do I think at the end of it, he was remorseful for what he did? I actually do. From when I watched him, I actually believe that his apologies and the way he went through it seemed genuine. Um, and like I said, like, do you know how many fucking people are getting away with this despicable shit all the time? And he was made an example of, and as he should have been, as he should have been, I'm not taking anything away from that, but I am also a person and I know it's hard for people to understand, but I am also a person that believes in second chances for people. Um, now third chances, no. But I, 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 again, would I sell him a dog? No, probably not. That's not something that would be, that would go over well for me. But I try to remove hate from my heart as often as I can. You know, I try to find ways to see people in their best in, in, instead of at their worst, if, if, if you can understand that. So, um, anyways, I have already answered your question to where I would not, but I just kind of wanted to elaborate a little bit further, but anyways, <clears throat> let's see. I, I started with tossing a ball then teach them their name after they pick up, up recalling the ball. You can do that. Um, You know, the typical way to really teach a good recall is just put the dog on a long line, go for a walk, and just change direction a lot. Right? Change direction. Yeah, you can have a ball with you, right? But make sure that they're on the lead, right? And just change direction. Generally, I use food, you know, at that point. But really, like, a a ball or play is a much more motivating thing for a dog. Once you get to that point, that's where you're going to get that speed. That's where everything's going to really ramp up. You're going to connect the best of the dog through play. There's really no better way to train a dog than through play. But you can't use play until it's it's functional for you, right? So, like, you can't teach a dog through tug if they try to grab the, t- the tug out of your hands every time it's down or they don't know how to bring it back or they don't know how to let it go. You can't teach anything off of that, right? So, as you're you, – you have to basically teach a dog to play. Right. So as I'm, you know, going through, um, you know, uh, early engagements and different things and positioning and and where I'm using food and marks like that, you know, in the background, I'm going to be slowly I'm teaching the dog to play. Right. So I'm going to be able to use that at a certain point. But when it comes to a recall, like you walk the dog in one direction, change direction, be very excited going hey here and say whatever it is here, come whatever it is, very excited, moving in the opposite direction. And when they use, if a dog, if your dog understands leash pressure, some people dog don't. So the fucking dog is tugging all the fucking place. But if your dog understands a wee bit of leash of leash pressure, then you use a bit of leash pressure to give the dog the direction to come towards you. When they come to you, you mark that. Yes, food, right? You mark that, right? And then you go again. The dog walks away from you again. You change direction again. You call the dog, same thing. You mark that, all right? That's how you're going to teach a recall. And over time, with dogs, it's all about consistency, consistency, right? So consistency in building that pattern. And right? so dogs to understand that. Oh, he says here, I come back. So with me, I have two recalls, two no's. So formal, informal. So basically a formal recall would be here if I said that. And that would mean that I want the dog to come to me, sit in front of me, get ready for, uh, I, you know, we, we might go into a bit more of a formal training routine. If I just whistle, That means that I want the dog to just come and check in with me in my general vicinity. So if I might have not been able to see them, I whistle, they come back, they get near me, then they can go off again. Because I think most of the time, something with people is like the time that people want the most structure with their dogs is during a walk. And that's actually the time that I don't give a shit about anything. 
Like, as long as the dog understands how to walk well on the leash, like, obviously, you don't want your dog dragging you all around. But as long as I've done all of that before, or my dog walks well on the leash, you know, when he needs to. And me, also, I teach the dog when I say foos, I want him on my left side looking up at me. And if I say switch, I want him on my right side not looking up at me. Right? Um, so I ordered two t-shirts, two hoodies from the contest, haven't received them yet. So Karina's in here. Um, write an email. Some how long ago was it? Because generally, sometimes shipping gets a little delayed, and it can be anywhere between two to three weeks. Sometimes it really depends. Depends on what it was, and which warehouse it's coming from. Um, so, but write an email, and we will make sure you're taken care of, hundred percent. Once my dog learned to understand me, it got easier. Well, yeah, that's so. That's the process of teaching your dog to understand, right? Would you say Missy and Ghostface were your two most athletic dogs? Ghostface is very athletic for his size, obviously. So he was extremely athletic. Missy was pretty athletic because she's a little dog like that. But, bro, Ace was some kind of athlete. Um, so, uh, David, so DDK line family dogs. She just replied to you. She's she runs part of the computer stuff down there, so she can track your order. I always train my dogs on leash first, then did the off leash training because I feel like if you don't have control of them on the leash, you definitely won't have control off the leash. Heather, spot on. That is the way that it works. Let me see. He demands treats, so I like food first, then treat. Now he is food, then demands treats. So my dude is a huge bribery, and I know it's our fault. Sometimes it upsets us a bit, but there are other emotional factors to it. Our previous pet died in a robbery, so I feel like we should give him everything. Well, listen, if you want to give... First of all, I'm very sorry for that. Like, that's 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 fucking horrible, man. I'm, I'm you know, My heart goes out to y'all. Because ain't nobody should lose a pet, especially in that manner. So love to you. But the thing to understand is you can't help anything you feel bad for, right? So you want to remove all that. And if you really love the dog and you really want to do what's right for the dog, provide the dog structure. Provide the dog the comfort of structure. Because that is what dogs flourish in. Dogs do not flourish in freedom. Freedom, freedom actually gives dogs anxiety. Freedom actually gives dogs problems. Like That's where it comes from. Dogs require structure. Like they require it. That's what they function in. So so do people, really. Like, you know what I mean? Like people function in structure. We function in structure. Right? Like that's that's the way that it works. So if you really love your dog, which I know you do, feed them structure, feed them rules, feed them limits, feed them boundaries. Right. This is feed feed them early engagement. Right. <laughs> that these are the things that you want to give to them. Right. Not just freedom freedom dogs they the dogs want to know what to do and when to do it another problem that people really have is you know the dog will be doing something that they don't like whether it be like mouthing on them or something and they'll just be sitting there saying no when again we already went over this that nine times out of ten your dog doesn't even understand what no means and the second part of it is is no what okay so if i'm telling my dog no i'm going to tell them no sit no down no bed no something else right that's what's going to change that's what's going to be a game changer for you it can't just be open-ended no right that that the dogs don't understand that like that's just thinking that dogs are, are like us where look i'll use it's almost confusing because there's points with dogs where they're very 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 similar to how you, we raise children and then there's other parts that are completely different like an example is fear all right so if generally when a dog's afraid of something people automatically you know want to it's okay they want to tell the dog it's okay and, and pet the dog when they're in this scared state of mind now for people that could work right because if my kid was afraid of like something in in the corner over there or something right like i could go to him and be like hey come here listen there's nothing to be afraid of over here there's nothing there's nothing to be afraid of over here Come here, look, I can show you. That's because we can communicate in that manner. So I could show him that. Now, 
if I brought my dog over to that corner, it was something he was afraid of. And I started petting him, right? And telling him that it's okay. You know, it's okay. I'm literally just reassuring him that the state of mind that he's in is the state of mind that I want him in. That's why so many people have such a problem with fear, with dogs, which fear then can turn to aggression. But that's why people have such an issue with it is because how they think to solve it is the same way as they would try to solve it with children, right? Is where you're going to just tell them that it's okay, where you actually do not want to do that. You know, if your dog is, is fearful in that moment, right, redirect it to something else that they're going to not be in that state of mind. And then you praise that state of mind, teach them to ignore, right? So like I've had dogs that were afraid of like fucking sewer grates, you know, that I'd be training and they wouldn't and people would be having this huge problem with this where they can't walk their their dog by sewer grades that go all these things and it's because of that same process telling the dog it's okay uh it's okay like you know and, and then that's the problem that they start to create right so what you do in these situations is unless there's something that the dog needs to fear unless there's like a fucking Loch Ness monster or like a fucking alligator is going to come out of the sewer and fucking eat them then we pay no mind to that and we just walk through it, right? So it's like, I'm going to go right over and we're just going to walk through it. And after we do that continuously for a while and we don't get into this tugging match with the dog and like trying to ask them to do, and we just go, the dog will catch on, right? So the best way to eliminate fear is to show them that there's nothing to fear by showing them there's nothing to fear. Unless there's something to fear. If there's something to fear, like, you know, like, you know, something's in, like I said, if something's going to come out of there and get us, shit fucking hey, I don't want to be by that shit either. And then the dog should see that, right? But if there's nothing to fear, then we're going to show the dog that by not having any reaction to them having a reaction when we walk by. And that's what's going to remedy this situation slowly because they're going to take that energy from you and be like, oh, okay, well, you're not afraid. Like, okay, well, why should I be? But even in the case where you're like, oh, well, I wasn't afraid before. You weren't afraid, but you're panicking almost when they start to do that. When you start to get into the, oh, it's okay. Come on. It's okay. You're doing this whole thing. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to walk by it. And I'm going to walk by it again. I'm going to walk by it. I'm having no reaction. Literally zero. Uh, you know, and then eventually the dog can be like, oh, all right. Well, okay. That's fine. And that's how it works. You know, dogs, it's a pattern. You just create a new pattern. That's it. David, your orders have been processed and done. It's got to be shipped. Uh, it's got to be the shipping person. However, it also says was delivered, but just email the apparel and email Lisa will let me know. Okay, so yeah, so it's being it's being figured out. They'll work on it. Hulk sleep twenty four. Um, yeah, I understand. Get back in town. Does the old dog do new tricks? Uh, that's one of the worst sayings in dogs is that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You one hundred percent. Hulk's having a dream. You can one hundred percent look at him. He's having a heavy dream. You can hundred percent teach an old dog new tricks. It's all about recreating a pattern. Okay, I'm going to give you one last tip and then I'm going to get out of here. So creating a new pattern right, since we're on that. So a lot of the time people, when they go to take their dog for a walk, this is fucking, again, 95% of people. When you go to take your dog for a walk, you touch the dog's leash. All of a sudden, the fucking dogs start losing their fucking mind, bouncing off the fucking walls. Because the pattern that you've created over time is that that leash signals excitement and they're going outside a lot of time people go you want to go outside you want to go for a walk come on come on let's go don't do that all right that like you're literally start you're literally you already failed the walk if that's how you start the walk you've already failed the walk right you failed before you've even started okay before you've even begun you failed Okay, so I'm going to teach you where some people are like, oh, well, I can't get out of it. It's a, it's actually a very easy thing to reset. And once you reset, you can start over. Okay, and you can try again. So what you're going to do if your dog does that, okay, what you're going to do if you have a dogs or dogs that get very excited about going outside every time they see the leash is you're going to, throughout your day, pick up the leash from wherever it is. Okay, your dog's going to have a reaction. Here's the key. Don't look at your dog. Don't talk to your dog. Have no reaction to the dog all right pick up the leash move it somewhere else put it down no reaction just continue on with your day maybe 20 minutes goes by pick up the leash again move it somewhere else maybe an hour goes by 
pick up the leash again, click it to the dog's collar, unclick it, put it back on the counter, walk away. Okay? Do this shit randomly, continuously for about two to three weeks a month. Again, another killer with dog shedding is expectation. So it may take certain dogs longer. Don't really put a time limit on it. But I just say that because it's natural to say shit like that for humans to have some kind of. But again, expectation is not good. But um, so if you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to reset the pattern. And after a little while, the dog is going to see the leash. That means nothing because they're going to be like, oh, all right. The leash doesn't mean shit. It could be like the same thing if you when you pick up your shoes that the, the dog starts to go crazy. Same Same idea there. Pick up your shoes, move them somewhere else. Don't do anything. Don't go for a walk. No reaction. Pick them up, move them. No reaction. All right. If you do that over time, you're going to reset. And then when you reset, then you can start over. And that's what you want. All right. And then you can restart from the beginning. And that's the same thing. Old dog, new tricks. You absolutely can teach an old dog new tricks. It's just about creating a new pattern for them. That's all. So, but all right. Yo, I'm going to go. I think I got to do a Facebook Live probably. And then, um, yeah, I think I'm going to post one of the vlogs today. I might do it tomorrow actually though, because I just want to get another thumbnail. As soon as I have two thumbnails, I'll feel more comfortable and I can do it. I'm going to start to post one video a week. We're going to do one vlog a week and then we're going to fill it with um, a different segment. So I have this top dog video that I'm going to start to work on, but we're going to do one vlog top dog and then we're going to fill it with shorts throughout the week. So we should be pretty active. So the car keys, even same thing. Same thing. So apply that same thing to anything that gets the dogs excited like that. Pick up your keys. If your dog's getting excited when you touch your keys, pick up your keys. Just walk somewhere, put them back down, go back to what you're doing. Completely ignore the dogs. But the key to understand is completely ignore the dog in the situation. If you look or give, don't, nothing. Like, I mean, like you can't even see them. Even if they're right there doing them, just literally ignore. Completely ignore Right? And when you do this over time, you're going to see it's going to dissipate. And over time, they won't care about whatever it is that you were doing there because that's just simply a pattern that you created. Same, another example of the pattern is people generally, when they walk their dogs, you'll see that the dog, when they get closer to your house, you're like, oh, they want to go home and they start pulling towards your house. No, it's because the pattern that you do is you walk out of your driveway, you walk to the left, you walk up here, you walk back, you come back and you go back home. So the dog knows that pattern. Now, if you walk past your driveway for a couple of weeks, uh, I guarantee your dog won't pull down towards your driveway. They'll just be like, oh, okay, it doesn't mean anything. But it's the pattern that you've created that the dogs understand. You got to understand. Dogs understand patterns and marks. Patterns and marks. The simpler, the more clear you understand that, the better off you're going to be. Patterns and marks. To remove the emotional shit. Patterns and marks. That's what dogs understand. Let's make it simple. Now, it's fun. And obviously, like, I talk to my dog. I got all kinds of, you know, relationships with my dogs and, and you know, the entertainment stuff and all of that. But in reality, in, at the core, right, remove all that shit. And it's this is how you become good with dogs. Dogs understand patterns and marks, right? They're not as emotionally invested as you would think in situations. They just, they don't operate in the same way that we do. Patterns and marks, okay? Patterns and marks, body language. That's a dog. Patterns, marks, body language. That's a dog, right? That's how they operate. So <clears throat> I see I do not leave a collar, but he actually has a collar on. It's just really small. You can't see it. <clears throat> so he does have a collar. You just can't see it. But I do have collars on most of my dogs. So Drake also has a collar on. Kobe does not, but the other two do. So most of the time I have collars on the dogs because that's something that you do want to do is you want to have, if you have multiple dogs around each other, you want to have collars on dogs. But Again, when you're when you're in my position at times, you know, I've been around a dog for 21 years, you know, so I I, I have a, a few other techniques of, of what I can do if if I need to in a situation like that. So but that is a good that's that's it's a good observation and it is a good thing to keep collars on your dogs if you have multiple dogs around. But as I showed you, he actually does have a collar on and uh, so so does Drake. Um what happened between you and big dog chains? Uh, nothing. They, we just, they just didn't renew the contract. So I just don't promote them. That's all. Like nothing. I, personally, as people, bro, I love I love dude. He's a great dude. I, don't, I have no 
I have zero personal issues with them at all. I don't know if you like saw something else that somebody else said. Maybe somebody has a problem with me. I don't know. I'm unaware of these things, so I don't know where that came from. But what happened with us, nothing happened. All that happened really is um, I waited on a contract for a year because I started in this, like they came to me when they were on Kickstarter and I brought them to the world. I put them in my shows. I got them product placement in shows with, you know, with over probably over 500 million views in total on things. Um, I put them on the map, you know, obviously I connected them with all the other dog breeders. That's how other people saw them is through seeing them, my dogs having the chains and then other breeders, and then it kind of rolled for them. So, you know, I was a really pivotal piece in, in creating this, this business uh, with them. And I, you know, I just didn't, I'd never asked for much over years. You know, I just got the products and, and, you know, I was just very, I was just good to them in the same way. I just got the products and I was just good to them. Um, you know, I didn't really receive money. I didn't get you know anything like that. And so when it started to come and it was like, Hey, you know, we want, you know, we have these codes and, and, and different things um, that we want you to, to use. I just didn't feel like I was a code guy. You know what I mean? I didn't feel like I'm going to promote you this heavy and then expect people to type in a code because a lot of times people don't do that. So, you know, I wanted a bit of equity in the business and that's what we were working out. And it was actually agreed upon. I just needed the contract. So I waited a year and never saw the contract. And so that was that. So now, yeah, when I post videos with the dogs that have the chains on, I do not tag them. I do not promote them. I do not answer people's questions of where they can get the chain. I don't do any of that anymore because I just, I don't have a contract that I, uh, you know, I don't have a contract that I agree with. So it's it really simple as that. But like I said, that's all business shit when it comes to like who they are. I love Miguel. He's, I'll, I'll, he'll always, I'll, I mean, again, I don't know how he feels about me. I have no fucking idea. But from my perspective, like I would still consider him my friend. If he was in the area, you'd, you're welcome to come and, and hang out or what. I mean, I'd, it, to me, nothing has changed in that regard. It's literally just business shit. When it comes to business, I just keep those things separate. You keep friendship, business, they're separate. You know what I mean? You got to keep them separate. If you're friends with somebody and you're doing business, you got to be able to separate the two. So it's just business. It's business. We just didn't do good business in that regard. And, you know, and, and that was that. You know what I mean? So it's really, that's all that it is. It's nothing more than that. You know what I mean? It's, I would say the same thing when it came down to, to, to the bully Mac situation. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't, they're just, it just, I didn't get what I deserved in the situation. So I just removed myself after a little while and that was it. And that's where we came up with, you know, my own thing, Caleb genetics and, and, you know, all of that. But again, like, you know, I actually really don't know them personally, but I don't take it personal is what I mean. It's not a thing that I, I don't like, if you take business personal, you're gonna be in trouble. You know what I mean, so I do not take business things personal. Um, it's just business. So that's it. But anyways, um, I appreciate y'all, man. I think I'm gonna get the off here now. Um, I appreciate everybody. Make sure you go check out the giveaway, ddklonapparel.com. There should be products below the videos that you can also just get like that. So you should be able to do that. But uh, yeah. All right, y'all. I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate y'all. Peace, love, respect. You already know what it is, y'all. Be good out there. And uh, yeah, you already know. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm going to I'm gonna try to do YouTube Live every day too as well. I'm going to try to do Facebook Live, YouTube Live, TikTok Live every day. I'm going to try to do them at least one every day. Blue Vet 22. Hey, I appreciate you, bro. I'm super sad that I sold my red Corvette. Honestly, I like shit breaks my heart, but it, it is what it is. It was a good deal. The time was there. The time was right. And, you know, it happened. So, again, like I said, I lost a shit ton of money in stocks and other things over the past year. Or so, just, you know, it was, it, was, it was the time. It made sense. So, that's what we did. But I'm, I'm fucking sad about it, dude. I'm not going to lie. Um, but, anyways, all right, y'all. Peace be the journey, y'all. I love y'all. I appreciate everybody, man. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your morning, evening, afternoon, night, wherever you're at. Hope it's an amazing time with your eyes open. And when you go to go to bed, you close your eyes. I wish you nothing but sweet dreams. Well, sometimes it's good to have nightmares. You wake up to an epiphany. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'm sending you nothing but positive vibes. So that's all. All right, y'all. Peace be the journey. Peace, love, and respect. You already know it is, y'all. I'm out. And folks awake now. Peace. <laughs>